Well, hello. Um, I am Patricia Iglesias, and now I will present the paper title, What do I do with these images? A practical guide to the classification of images sent by survey participants. This paper is co-authored with Carlos Ochoa and Melanie Revilla. And this project has received funding from the European Research Council. Um, well, images are getting more and more attention between survey methodologies and researchers in general because they have several potential advantages, uh, which relate to both the participants and the researchers. Uh, from the participants' perspective, images might reduce the time up and effort, especially when they replace several conventional questions or even one that is open-ended and make the overall experience uh, more enjoyable because people are generally used to capture and share visual data in general. As for researchers, images might avoid uh, participants not knowing when the information of interest might be contained in an image. Uh, they would also avoid relying on the remembering self versus what actually happened and will reduce human error, uh, the satisfying and the effects of social desirability. And finally, images might provide data for concepts that have not been measured so far, uh, because though uh, they might be subjects that are not approachable with conventional questions. Most literature so far focus on the feasibility of asking respondents to share images in the frame of web surveys. Uh, but not on how to deal with the images collected. For the advantages that I previously mentioned to materialize, we need people, well, people need to accept to participate and successfully send the images. Um, in that sense, participants must have the skill to capture and share visual data. They have to be available, which means that they are in a situation that allows them to perform such tasks. And finally, they have to be willing to do it. And any of these conditions is missing, the collection won't be possible. And second, the information needs to be extracted from the, extracted from the images. Because depending on how this is done, we can get more or less information. And also the accuracy of such information might vary. In that sense, the extraction affects the quality of the results. Um, the process of extracting the information and assigning labels to the items contained in an image is called classification. And our goal is to provide a practical guide about how to deal with the images required in the frame of web surveys to extract the best information possible. So first, what type of items can be extracted from images? First, we can extract objects and they can be either categories or attributes. In the case of this picture, we could get categories such as dog, blanket, or floor, or we could get attributes such as white, soft, or furry. We can also extract scenes. This differs from the previous approach because it focuses on how the items interact with each other. Uh, for example, in this picture with the previous approach, uh, we could say cars or signs, but once we see how the different elements relate to each other, we would say parking lot. Um, there are more or less complex uh, scenes and also perspective to approach them. So for example, in this picture, uh, the item uh, can vary depending on the researcher's approach. So they can be, it can be a family meeting or it can be a celebration or it can be a dinner depending on how, um, on the interest of the researcher. We can also extract text, and the focus can be placed on different uh, text items. In, the, in this case, this is, a, this is a receipt. We can focus on the price per product, or in the products, or in the total expenses. We can also do a more complex analysis and keeping the same example. Um, instead of transcribing the information, the overall content um, might be assessed. So in this case, we could get the type of document as an outcome. Um, how can we classify the items contained in an image? There are two main dimensions, manual and automatic. As for the first, it corresponds to well, human classification, that is one or more humans that observe images and assign levels to the items contained in such images. 
And this would be pretty similar to coding open narrative answers in surveys. As for the automatic classification, the first type would be the already existing algorithms. They can be general, which means they are not focused on a specific topic. Um, they are available for free or against payment on the internet, and they can use predefined or custom labels, or they can be specific to a topic. They are usually not freely available. So in this case, we advise to approach the, uh, such algorithms from a collaborative uh, perspective. And also uh, algorithms can be uh, created considering the specificity of the project and developed within, within the scope of the project. In that sense, they can be developed externally or internally. With externally, uh, we mean that an external provider is contracted to develop the algorithm and with internally is that it's developed within the research group. And for such case, there are um, open libraries available for R and Python that help classify images, reading text, and also classifying text. Then, how to deal with image classification in the frame of surveys? We propose a six step process. The first step would be the operationalization. The second one, the definition of the labels. Third, choice of the classification methods. Four, the collection of the images. Five, performing the classification. And six, the verification of the label. The first step, operationalization. Uh, this step is to define the type of items that are going to be classified, whether it's text, object, scene, et cetera and also if it's going to correspond to categories and or attributes. Um, researchers need to decide if they want, what they also need to decide if they are going to extract the information for all the items containing the image or uh, some of them. Uh, because images can provide a very large amount of information and in a, at a very granular level. So it is crucial for researchers to determine previously uh, in a very precise way, uh, which information uh, is of interest for them. In this image, um, these are screenshots for, from an iPhone app, and they show the screen time, the most used apps, the predefined usage categories, the number of pickups, and the number of notifications. Uh, in this sense, uh, researchers must define first which of these concepts they are interested in, and for example, in the case they are interested in all of them, what of the information presented in the screenshot will answer their research questions. The second step is the definition of the labels. We have the items, but what categories will be used to classify uh, such items? Those categories will be the labels and correspond to the response scale. In some cases, the labels can be uh, very clear. For example, if I, the, if I want to know the attribute and the attribute is a color, the label will include different colors. Um, however, uh, we can see different types of colors. And for example, I could use blue or I could use light blue and dark blue and 10 shades of blue. So uh, in this sense, we have to choose what are the labels that we are going to be interested in. Uh, in this example, it belongs to the Mosquito Alert project, and they have four uh, broad categories. Uh, two for the two species of mosquitoes they are interested in, a third one that includes all the other species, and a fourth one for those who can, uh, that cannot be recognized. In that sense, if at some point they would, are interested in a third species, species of mosquito, they would have to add that category. The third step uh, consists on choosing the classification method. As I presented before, we have four methods. And there are several factors that will influence, influence the decision on which method or methods to use. These factors are grouped in three categories. First, the classification task, second, the resources, and third, the overall data quality. As for the classification task, um, the first uh, factor is the total number of images. If the total number of images is low, and for low we mean uh, lower um, than 500, it is advisable to use human classification since it requires only limited resources 
and also allow to reach a high accuracy and consistency. However, if you have more images, automatic classification seems like a better fit since the classification would be cheaper and faster. And according to previous literature, automatic coding is 42,000% faster and 21,000% cheaper than a human classifier. classifier. Um, then we have the total number and kind of labels. Um, the human classifier can assign labels on a one by one basis, while automatic coding can assign several levels at the same time. So when it comes to the number of labels, we would advise automatic coding when there are too many labels. However, when we talk about the specificity, we advise to use customized uh, methods. When the information is very specific and take, for example, the mosquito alert project, it is difficult to find an already existing algorithm that fits the project's needs. And thus, human, human strength for that and algorithms developed within the scope of the project might provide more accurate information. The second dimension of resources. Um, researchers might have more or less of different kinds of resources, and this could play a role in the decision of which classification method I'm going to, uh, to choose. First, we have the human resources. We will need human resources in both human classification or automatic one. However, the profile of such um, persons will be different. Uh, for manual classification, we need uh, people trained uh, to classify. For external algorithm, we would need within the project team one person to check the labels produced by that algorithm. Another with a certain degree of technical knowledge, because even if they are not developing their own model, it is good to know how the external algorithm works in general. And finally, for an internal algorithm, we need a very specialized profile uh, that are programmers. As for the infrastructure, infrastructure uh, the development of an algorithm requires hardware the, to support it, such as computers or servers. Um, in the absence of such resources, manual classification um, can be considered. And also already existing algorithms um, and new algorithms developed externally, they use their own resources. And in the case of already existing algorithms, sometimes they offer software as a service solution that make this overall easy. And we also have the cost. Um, well, projects always need money, but in this case, if for example, uh, they don't have human resources to develop their own algorithm, and the cost to get uh, such skill is too high, maybe human classification or an already existing algorithm is a better fit. Um, already existing algorithm tend to not be that expensive in the case of the most popular ones, such as Google Vision or Amazon Recognition. They offer first under five euros for detecting labels and text in a thousand images each. So in the scope of a survey that we don't work with a huge extent of population in general, uh, that could be a, a, a good choice. But what needs to be consider is the frequency of use, because if it's an ongoing project, maybe it will make sense to, um, to pay for, for those skills to develop an, an algorithm. And finally, something that is very important is the availability of images, because programming an algorithm requires having images to train the model, usually several thousands of images. So if researchers are in no condition of getting the extent of images needed, needed to train the algorithm, um, they should rely on hiring an external provider or developing the task uh, manually. In that sense, an internal development will make sense if they have images from a past study or if it's an ongoing project, which eventually will have enough images to, to go to the training uh, part. And the third dimension, that is the uh, overall data quality. Uh, first, accuracy. Uh, in general terms, it is expected that manual classification will deliver results more in line with the research interest. These humans have a stronger sense of what they are looking for compared to computers or an algorithm. 
Uh, in that sense, uh, classifying manually should provide the best expected results, except when there are too many images or too many labels, given the human errors that we previously mentioned. Um, in any case, we advise to use uh, two or more classifiers to compare the results. Well, I will get into that in the step uh, six, but it would be a practice that is also used uh, when coding open-ended answers in surveys. When it comes to the consistency, well, even after, even after training classifiers, there might be dissimilarities of judgment among them, uh, which could lead them to the same items being labeled different. Uh, in that sense, the automatic models uh, would be more consistent since they use the same patterns to classify images throughout uh, the process. Then we have the data collection, data protection, I'm sorry. Um, if the images collected include sensitive or private content, such as personal information or maybe the faces of your kids, uh, they might not be able to be shared with an external supplier due to ethics revision or laws of data protection. Uh, thus, especially when a sensitive topic is going to be studied, I don't know, health or um, wages or any sensitive topic, uh, it would be better to consider, keep, consider keeping the images within the scope of the project and develop an algorithm or use human uh, classification. Um, finally, transparency. Uh, when developing an internal algorithm, uh, researchers have both control uh, over what is being programmed and the option to share their code. Uh, because if you're doing, for example, human classification, you can share the guidelines of classification, but you can also do that when using an algorithm plus the code, and then the code can be checked and used by other researchers as well. Well, there are many factors, so I'm going to show you some examples uh, so we can see how the decision process would flow for projects of different nature. Um, first, for a research studying incomes and expenditures every five years, this could be a project or imaginary project that has a high number and complex complexity of labels, a high number of images. They have images from previous waves and also hardware and specialized human resources and in their previous experience they have found low accuracy and consistency with human classification and also they have sensitive information in that case the most sensible decision is to use a new algorithm developed internally another research is focused on recycling and they collect thousand images containing ten thousand items uh, well, first, they would need very specific labels according to each type of waste, for example, plastic, paper, glass, organic, and any other that might be available. They have a low budget, no specialized human resources, no infrastructure, in general, no resources. And when using a really existing algorithm, they found uh, low accuracy. So at the end, for them, the best option is to use human classification. Then we have this same, the very uh, uh, same project. Um, they found a pattern in the images that allowed them to improve the already existing algorithm. And so they could get a higher accuracy. Uh, so since they can now get a higher accuracy for them, the best option is to use this already existing algorithm with the custom labels. And finally, we have a totally different research project, well, they also use a specific labels, but they have a specialized human resources, have the infrastructure. And at the beginning, they have no images to train the model, but it's going to be an ongoing project. So they will have uh, enough images eventually. And also they have found high accuracy uh, when doing this task manually. So they decide to go manual at the beginning, but then when they have enough images to train the model, uh, they might decide to use a new algorithm developed internally. And um, well, just for you to know, this is the case of the Mosquito Alert project that they started with specialists uh, labeling the insects. And then when they gather a huge extent of images, they started uh, using then their own algorithm. The fourth step is the collection of the images. 
for this, uh, there are some main considerations that must be taken into account. First, the storage of the images, uh, because researchers should decide if the images will be deleted or not after the classification and the level uh, of uh, security that for that uh, storage. So they have to assess that. Um, and even if they are deleting the images, they would have to keep them for, uh, for a time to do the analysis. So they have to consider the storage of the images. Also, it is important to create an ID to relate the images to each participant. So they are um, in condition to cross the images with other variables of the survey. Um, next, the size of the files. This is very important, not only in terms of storage, as mentioned before, uh, but for uploading the images, because if they are too heavy, it might happen that for respondents, it takes them a lot of time to load the images and make the overall experience more frustrating and unpleasant. Uh, then we have uh, how, the, how the sensitive data and metadata is going to be processed and collected. Um, <clears throat> for example, metadata uh, could provide information on where the person is when taking the picture. Um, in that sense, uh, researchers should bear in mind if they are going to collect metadata and if they do, how they are going to deal with it. And uh, Well, we always use informed consent when doing research, but in this case, it's very important when collecting images that the informed consent show what not to upload. In that sense, highlight to the, to the respondents that please don't upload your face, don't upload your ID or any sensitive information or private information. And also uh, the informed consent should inform on the intellectual property. Uh, it might happen that images are going to be deleted after the analysis, but also it might happen that uh, when writing the paper, we want to use some of those images. Um, then who's the owner of the images? So that has to be very clear uh, in the informed consent. And finally, uh, this might sound obvious, but uh, researchers will need tools to collect the images. Uh, well, here's the, uh, the tool that we have developed within the scope of our project. Uh, it's called Web Data Visual. Um, it allows to capture and share images from the smartphone, as well as sharing already stored or old images. Um, also allows to share visual data from the PC, but in this case it's only um, images that are already stored in the PC or saved in the PC, whether it's previous or during the survey. There's also another tool available called uh, Survey Image, and they also allow to capture and share images as well as sharing, sharing already stored uh, images. Uh, then we have the step five. Uh, which is performing the classification. Uh, some preliminary checkups uh, must be made. Uh, first, look for inappropriate and conflicted images. Then assess if there are other potential labels to be used. In the step two, we already said that we have to define the labels. But what if when expecting the images, we have a subset of images, and we find a sixth element, for example, that is important, a sixth label. So in that case, it would be interesting to check the picture and if we need to add a label, do it. And that means training the classifiers or training the model. And um, finally, this is very important. A process of image enhancement must be considered uh, because several respondents, it is most likely that they won't be professional photographers and that images uh, will be blurry or they will have too much light or too little light. So we need to have a process of image, well, yeah, enhancement to improve their quality. So it's easy for both the humans or the algorithm to see and read the, the image. Then there are other, another type of checkups depending on the method chosen to classify the images. Uh, for, for, first, for human classification is to define the classification guidelines, training the classifiers, and also provide the necessary infrastructure for an already existing algorithm uh, you have to choose one or more than one. And it's very important that you check with those providers if they have the labels you need, and if not, if they can add them. 
And also if they have an application programming interface available, you will have to upload uh, your images. As for a new algorithm developed externally, uh, you have to decide who is going to develop the algorithm. And along with that, you have to provide them with the guidelines um, of the research on what you expect for the classification. And also you need to make sure that the algorithm works properly and provides the results as expected. And with the new algorithm developed internally, you have to develop the algorithm and also training. And for that, you have to have uh, images available. As for the last step, step six, that is the verification of the labels. When using a human classification, a subset of images should be swapped between the classifiers in order to check if the labels assigned are the same or not. And as for automatic models, some images should be classified manually and well, again, check if the assigned labels are the same or not. One suggestion is to swap at least 30 images to check accuracy, that is um, the quantity that is advisable when using open-ended questions in surveys. And also if you used more than one method, you can contrast the results between them and check which, which of them is more accurate. There's um, also the possibility to check with participants. If you are doing an online survey and you can uh, analyze the information in the moment, you can show the, the labels to the participants and they can assess if they are correct or not. And with their answers, you can also improve the, the algorithm. Uh, for example, uh, within a receipt, uh, there was the item cleansing gel. And with the respondents verification, you can check if, whether it's a hand product or a face product. However, this would work only for research where participants know the content and are expected to see the produced uh, labels. In the case of them knowing, uh, I'm going to repeat the example of the mosquito project, probably wouldn't make sense to show them the labels because a regular person would be able to make a distinction between the different types of mosquitoes. And regarding the, if they are expected to see the results or not, uh, there are different types of classification. Uh, well, a very simple example, if I want to classify cars uh, between, and the labels are pretty and ugly, I wouldn't want some participants to know that I found that, I find that their car is ugly. So as a summary of our six step process, uh, the operationalization and definition of the labels, as in any other survey question, is key. Because after all, even if we are asking for images, it is a survey question. Uh, the factor to choose a classification method favor one over the other, and what researchers should consider is the project characteristics and needs. Um, when collecting images, Researchers must be able to link the images with the corresponding with the corresponding respondent while protecting their privacy. If they don't, they will have several isolated images and won't be able to cross with the other variables. Five um, preliminary, preliminary checkups must be made before classifying. A part of them will depend on the classification method chosen. Um, finally, the labels, whether are produced by a person or by an algorithm how to be verified by a human. So in conclusions, well, first, first, first of all, uh, even before uh, our six step uh, process, researchers must decide if images will work for their question. Um, for instance, if I want to know an opinion, it is most likely that an image won't be the best option. So I should decide to use images when they will improve my research. Um, second, uh, it is not easy to work with images as I have just shown you there are many decisions to make during the process and also factors to consider. And the truth is that things can, can go wrong and researchers should try to anticipate those mistakes uh, when possible. Um, also, um, a precise definition of the information to be collected is crucial. And with this, I mean the definition of the items and the labels. And also it's necessary to have a tool to extract such information. Um, verifications are always necessary. And in this sense, humans will always be a part of the process, even if using automatic classification. Um, well, as a final thought, 
even if it's a complex process, images have the potential to provide new and or better insights and to improve the overall respondent, respondent's experience. Thus, we encourage their use when researchers find that they might be a good fit for their research. Thank you.